So for the first time in Prospect Sierra history, I got to have first grade for drama. And we've been working on a lot of drama skills over the course of the year. And one of those skills is storytelling. And everything that you will see this afternoon is kid, student driven and generated. So they came up with all of these stories in half groups and will act it out while I narrate. The one rule that they had, to they had to incorporate a farm somewhere in their story. And that went along with what first grade does with a lot of learning around farms and migrant farm workers. I would like to invite the first group from 1SR up who are doing Coco Land. Go on up. Thank you, Sam, for leading. Give them a round of applause. So this group was highly inspired by something that I love, Coco. There was a place called Coco Land. And in Coco Land, there was a farm. On the farm. <laughs> on the farm, there was a farmer named Fred. Fred has two cats, two dogs. <laughs> and two horses. <laughs> and in one of the mountains of Coco Land, called Mount Coco Olympus, there is a lion that watches over the land, and her name is Coco Rita. <laughs> Fred was a very rich man. <laughs> but he was also very kind. He walked into his very fancy house. You see, in Coco Land, farmers are very rich. Fred looked around and thought about what he needed to do. Out of Fred's window, he saw his beautiful view of the pond that was full of hot cocoa and marshmallows. All of a sudden, it started becoming very windy. And then out of nowhere, a cocoa hurricane formed over the cocoa pond. A giant tornado started to swirl full of cocoa and marshmallows. Everyone in Coco Land panicked. <laughs> Fred didn't know how to protect his house or his farm. She ran as fast as she could until she stood right in front of the tornado. Tornado. <laughs> she roared as loud as she could. As she roared, gold chocolate coins came out of her mouth and went into the tornado. And then suddenly, the tornado stopped. It was bright and sunny again. Fred thanked. Coco Rita. Coco Rita went back to Mount. Everything was right in. Coco Land. What do you say when it's over?
right. Thank you very much, my friends. So this group, thank you for being so ready and on point. This group was super inspired by Japanese culture. And we know that what, they're, what you're about to see in here is just a small representation of Japan. And there's so much more, but we can't wait to see what's about to happen. One day in... There was a little forest with magical creatures and no trash in sight. On the other side of the forest, there was a farm where they make dumplings. There are goats, a horse, downtown Tokyo. A ninja comes out of a magical portal not knowing where they are. The ninja walks into the forest heading toward the dumpling farm. There you go. Just as the ninja arrives at the farm, a very angry and terrible Godzilla came out of nowhere. Godzilla wanted to hurt all the animals. Except, except the goats because they had <laughs> The two wizards, the two wizards were very scared, but they knew they had to help their animals. The ninja yelled, Why are you dying, Godzilla? How dare you? Godzilla stopped. The wizards were so happy that the animals the ninja and Godzilla became pals. And Godzilla apologized to all the animals on the farm. I'm sorry. The ninja says, Would you like to have lunch? Would you like to have lunch with me? Godzilla happily agrees with all the animals and, and wizards of the farm. The wizards make them fresh dumplings. And they all stayed friends. group from 1A2, and this was very much inspired by clocks, and pickles, and mazes. It'll make sense in a second. One day in the land of... There was one clock pickle maze that was <laughs> On this day, two big monkeys who were light gray and brown walked into this forbidden maze. <laughs> they had half a coconut on each of their heads. Then the monkeys climbed over and they ate a hole in one of the walls. The monkeys climbed through the hole, and this took them to a farm. <laughs> they didn't recognize where they were. Suddenly, a ginormous, psychic cat jumps out to greet them on the farm. Hi. The giant cat 
wants to go back with the monkeys in the hole. So everyone turns around and goes back in, fighting their way out of the pickle maze. The monkeys, the monkeys and the giant cat eat through walls and they keep needing to take breaks because they're getting so full. But they can't stop eating. Fee, fi, fo. that they fell asleep and they snored. Oh, not the audience, thank you. And they snored and they snored some more. They slept for quite some time wondering, will we ever get out of the forbidden clock? And then they wake up. They believe in themselves. They can do this. And they finally take one last giant chomp. And they're set free. And our second group from 1A2, The Butterflies, and this story is very dramatic, and it's inspired by a forest full of very interesting bats and a certain kind of dancer. One day in a forest made of bad and great dancers. Pose. <laughs> there were four kids named Kidra, Olivia, Messy, and Professor Peaceful Pants. <laughs> in the middle of the forest. <laughs> Professor Peaceful Pants called to their mother. <laughs> then four little bad, excuse me, five little bad koalas came out and trapped the kids with traps made of watermelons. <laughs> The kids were very scared. Messy secretly loved the watermelon traps because they loved being messy. <laughs> then some of the bats swooped down and saw what was going on. They saved the kids from the koalas by eating the traps. <laughs> Suddenly, eating the watermelon traps made the bats feel strange. They suddenly became evil. The kids are even more scared now. They did. You're scared. There you go. They don't know what to do. Professor Peaceful Pants goes over to the bats and they do push-ups on top of the bats to make them stop. It doesn't work. The kids realize they must break dance to stop the bats from being evil. That doesn't work so they realize they have to do a boring break dance. <laughs> then the bats 
interest. And they begin kind again. <laughs> Professor Peaceful Pants and all the friends were even hungrier now. The sky suddenly rained grapes. Professor Peaceful Pants, as well as everyone else, swallowed one whole. And then they burped it out. <laughs> they looked over and saw a nearby farm. They ran over, and Professor Peaceful Pants' mom had lunch set up for everyone with all the food that is growing on the farm. And they were so happy. There were no mean koalas. And they all ate. Happily ever after. And then they wake up. Now do it. Stretch them out because you're going to give really big rounds of applause. I'm just getting your hands ready. Ready? Two, one SR who did plays inspired by Coco, Dumplings, and Downtown Tokyo. Can we give them a big round of applause? Great job for students. Yeah. 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 